Hi. Welcome. If you're here joining me for my live, please say hi and put your name in the chat. Let me know what you're up to today. Um, I'm actually doing this as part of a lunch and learn, <laughs> having my salad. So I'll get to enjoy that after this live. So let me know what you're up to today. I'm so curious. I love getting this sneak peek into people's lives. Today, I'll be answering the question, how do you network during a lockdown? And my answer might actually surprise you. I am Stacy Mayer, and I am a coach for corporate leaders to get them promoted into senior level leadership positions. And I want you to think of networking a little bit differently. And this will give you the answer of how to network actually during a lockdown. So instead of thinking, what can I get from this person? I want you to ask yourself, how can I help them? How can I serve them? How can I reach out to more people and support more people during this time? Adam Grant wrote an excellent book called Give and Take, and I highly recommend checking out this book. But he talks about how we have givers and takers in organizations. And oftentimes, the takers are the people who go into networking or relationship building from a place of, I need something from this person. And this is also why there are so many people who come to me for coaching and they're not actually able to go to people and ask them for something because they don't want to appear like a taker. They don't want to go that far in the other extreme. And then there are the givers. And the givers are the people who just want to show their support, that just want to put themselves out there in a bigger, bolder way. And these are the people that actually create better relationships, have a stronger impact at their work, at their organization, and they're really able to get the recognition that they deserve because people think of them first when an opportunity arises. So I want you to be one of those people who other people think of first. One of the other unique reasons why networking is actually so powerful and so accessible to you right now is because people are more accessible during this lockdown. Now, I have seen this in so many instances. So you think about a CEO, somebody that you could imagine that you've been wanting to reach out to for a very long time, or you're like, oh, yeah, that would be great. Well, if you wanted to get on their calendar before, you would have to sign up or you'd have to get to know their assistant. You would have to get on their schedule months in advance. It may or may not get canceled. Well, people are in their homes on Zoom calls ready and available. So people who you would have never had access to before are now available. So the first step that I want you to start thinking about is who can I reach out to that I normally would have just completely ignored, that I normally would have just been like, oh, there, that's not a person for me that I want to make a connection with. So I wanna challenge you for that as you're listening to this live, and I'm gonna give you some solutions to actually start networking with people and how to do that. But the first thing I want you to realize is that the possibilities are endless. Anything, any person that had closed doors before doesn't necessarily have those closed doors now. I'm gonna give you an example of a client that I had where I coached him. He was actually laid off from his organization and this was this past year, so this wasn't during the coronavirus, but um, he, uh, so, oh, what was I gonna say? Oh, sorry. <laughs> So one of the things that we really worked on is how he could actually reach out to people in this way of service. So for instance, one of the things is he had a lot of extra time on his hands, right? Like as you might be experiencing right now, especially if you're not working. If you are in a leadership position, I'm sure that you have 
so much to do right now. So in his particular case, he could offer solutions to people. So he would use that as an opportunity to reach out to people that he normally wasn't accessible to. And he would actually ask them what their challenges were what they were facing. So he was the type of leader that thrived during crisis, that thrived at turning organizations around. And he actually reached out to several different people and offered them solutions, helped them essentially brainstorm what their next steps were for free. You could imagine that if you are in that place of service and you are actually giving solutions to somebody, now you are building a stronger, deeper connection. And speaking of deeper connections, I want you to think of relationship building sort of like a T. So we have two different types of relationships that we can build. We can build shallow or, you know, like narrow and deep relationships, or you can build wide and broad relationships. So the narrow and deep relationships are the people that you haven't reached out to for a while, but you actually really like, or that know your name, that are want to be connected with you. So these people might want to have lunch with you, just like I'm having lunch with you today. <laughs> um, these are people that you genuinely want to talk to. You want to see how they're doing. You want to see what coping mechanisms they have, what they're learning during this time. So just really connecting with those types of people um, on and to make that relationship deeper. Now, the way that we can start to make our broader relationships, which also has its advantage, is that we can reach out on things like social media, people that we don't know very well, people that we've heard of, that we want to connect to, people in other industries, just all kinds of different ways that we could connect. But I want you to actually ask yourself, excuse me, <coughs> am I going to go deeper in a relationship or do I want to expand my network and just broaden my network? Both from the same place of service though. Not what can I get from you, but what can I give you? I have a client named Jennifer who works in sales and higher education. <laughs> so all of her clients are basically working from home now and the universities are closed. And she had her biggest month in March and April. She is actually being interviewed on a sales webinar today based on the strategy that she put into place during this time, during this time of crisis. I am so incredibly proud of her for really stepping up to the plate and showing what is possible during this time. But in terms of sales, of course, networking and relationship building is so incredibly important. And she developed a strategy specifically around relationship building. And she implemented that strategy right away. So in February, as soon as she got word that the crisis was happening, she put this strategy into place. So she prioritized relationship building. And that actually brings me into my first step that I wanna share with you today. And please reach out and ask questions. If you're on here, let me know that you're here. And if you're watching the replay, definitely write down replay and let me know what your questions are. I'll go back afterwards and answer all of them. So. Here is the first step to networking during a lockdown is to prioritize networking. Now, it's really easy to prioritize networking when you're laid off, when you need something. Keith Ferrazzi in his book, Never Eat Alone, says also never, never start networking when you need something from somebody. Think about it. You're needy. You're, you're graspy. You're, you know, it's pushy, right? And so you don't want to be networking from that desperate place that you actually need something from someone. Now, you might be laid off right now and you might be saying to yourself, oh, hey, well, what can I do? <laughs> because I actually am. I waited too long to expand my network. Okay, point taken. So what I want you to do is the mindset work that puts you in that place of service. Now, you might have to work really hard and every single day, your job becomes, who are those people that I can reach out to and offer these more strategic solutions? 
like I said at the beginning, I coach corporate managers into higher level leadership positions. And one of the things that I require of all of the managers that come to me is that we start to build that support structure in place 24 seven. You don't want to be the person who is without a job and hasn't already started expanding their network. For those of you who have already lost their job, please tell me, do you wish that you had started working on this sooner? So I don't want you to fall into that trap. I want you to make sure that you know who your mentors are. You have multiple sponsors. You have a network both deep and wide. So prioritizing networking all throughout your career, getting on boards, attending conferences, asking better questions in conversations, making sure that you're maintaining and thriving in these relationships 24 seven. So this is actually the way that most senior leaders operate because they know that it's lonely at the top and without their network, then they feel like they don't have that support structure to fall back on. So it's so important to really prioritize this. This is a sign when you prioritize networking that you are ready for a senior level leadership position. Step number two, I talked about it. What is in it for them? Making sure that when you're asking these questions and you're reaching out to people, that you're focusing on how you can actually provide them a solution, how you can actually answer the question. Now, I'm not talking about because you have a ton of extra time on your hands. So you're working around the clock and you might have a family to take care of. And you have a lot of different things on your plate right now. But it would be really interesting if you still wanted to use this as an opportunity to connect with people and offer solutions. Tell them what you're working on, what you're learning during this time. If you're in human resources and you've had to put together health and safety campaigns and, and put together plans, don't be afraid to share that with other people. You know, network with other human resource leaders during this time. So this is a time for you to really think, okay, how can I share? How can I add value? And how can I provide solutions for other people? And Step number three, be the solution. Think about when you're having these conversations with the, these people is that you're actually working for them. Pretend that you're working for them. And how? what would you say to them if they were your boss and you had an idea? So don't be afraid to actually dig in in these conversations and offer advice. People will remember you. They will appreciate you. And more importantly, they will call on you when an opportunity arises at their organization. A lot of people are getting shifted around right now. A lot of people are leaving organizations, which means those positions also need to be filled. So I want you to be on the winning side of this time. I want you to understand how can I use this time to get in front of people that maybe were not accessible for me to me before. I'm going to prioritize networking. So even though I'm busy, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to build and maintain those relationships because it can be super fun. This could be your happiest part of the day. Just like when you're re uh, like uh, having your reunions with your college friends on Zoom calls, right? It could be a really fun opportunity for you to have these higher level, more strategic conversations with other leaders that are that you really admire, that are going through very similar challenges as you right now. Step number two, what's in it for them? Making sure that you're always having conversations from a place of service. And step number three, be the solution. Offer solutions to people. If you do these three things over the next few months, I promise you will not only be set up to succeed and get promoted into that next level leadership position, but you will be happier in the process. Now, I have a very special offer for you. If you enjoy what I talked about today and you want to go even deeper with it, I am offering a free live webinar. I have one of them tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. 
and it's on how the biggest career jumps are made during times of crisis. I'm going to be walking you through my entire promotion blueprint process. You can go to stacymayer.com slash crisis webinar to register. I'll put that right here in the comments, stacymayer.com slash crisis webinar. Sign up there. I'll be doing a live Q&A at the end, answering any and all of your questions. And it's going to be super fun. So I hope that you'll join me. Take care. I wish you all the best during this time. I really believe it is a time to thrive. It is a time to do things, to think outside of the box, to do things you never thought were possible before, and to really step into that higher level leadership position. And I am honored to help you get there. Thanks so much. Now it's time for me to get back to lunch. Bye.